Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, welcome to the Refugee Welcome Collective Lunch and Learn series. In these sessions, we aim to bring you interesting and timely and engaging um, information. So whether you're a volunteer, community sponsor, resettlement agency staff, a local advocate, or someone who is interested in, in learning more, um, we hope that you enjoy today's session, um, which is actually an absolute treat. Uh, it's Parastu, the inspiring story of a young Afghan woman's journey. And so today we have the, the, the privilege and the opportunity to meet the inspiring people behind this documentary and also get a, a sneak peek as well, because um, this is a forthcoming film. Um, this documentary is a coming of age story that follows Farzana, an Afghan refugee who's joining us today through the growing pains of young adulthood, the unpredictable asylum seeking process and her inspiring journey from amateur actress to theater director. With the guiding hand of her brother-in-law and director Saleh, who's also joining us, Farzana grows confident, not just in her art, but also in speaking out about the injustices around her, inspiring other young girls in the Afghan and refugee communities of Malaysia. So if we can go to the next slide. So just as a quick reminder, um, joining us today, everyone is automatically muted. However, if you have any tech issues, please submit a question in the chat or the question box, and we will be sure to assist you. Um, but rest assured, at the end, um, we will have a Q&A, and everyone will be able to come off of, of mute and on camera if they desire to be able to ask their questions. Uh, additionally, um, we, we are recording, and so a recording of this presentation will be sent to everyone following today's uh, webinar. Um, and so that brings us to our presenters of today. Um, I'll turn it over to our presenters to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Thank you. Great. Hi. Um... My name is Justine Rose Arman. I'm the producer of Parastu, and we're super excited to be here today um, with Frazana and Saleh. Thank you to the Refugee Welcome Collective for hosting us. Um, I'll pass to Jennifer really quick just to introduce herself. Yeah, thank you so much. My name is Jennifer Macedo Young, and I am the director of the film. So, um, without further ado, we're going to share a few clips from the film. So I'm gonna share my screen now and please enjoy. I'm an actor in Paris to theater team. I feel like more excited and like worry and it's just like the first time like acting, it's kind of so excited. <laughs> yeah, that's what I dream. It has always been my dream that Afghan people, they don't allow their girls to be a singer, dancer, or an actor. They don't think like a girl can do it, but I just really want to show the people that they are wrong, they're so wrong. Because not only me, there are a lot of girls who like art. Today, <laughs> Stress, Faramush. Today, it might help not only me, it might help many Afghan girls in Afghanistan, Malaysia, and everywhere they are. I hope we do it well. Kudrat kan, ukadar ziyat kunin. As tariq kalam itan, as tariq irtibat chesh itan, as tariq mimik surat itan, as tariq bazi badan itan. I hope that. The ones who are the audience understand us and can feel. Yes, my dream came true. I hope, I hope like. 
the other, my other dreams came true like this one. I hope. و می میبینیم که مثلا چی چیزا کم است چی چیزا احساس نمیشه چی چیزا هنوز وجود نداره مریم wants to tell the story wants to tell the audience their story because she been through a lot why do you want to make them understand because most of them they don't know like what's going on and going on what going on in the, my country They don't know what's going on in my country. They don't know how is the feeling. What a moment! Would you turn next? What a moment! Would you turn Maryam? Bosh. What a moment! Would you turn Sidiqa? What a moment! Would you turn Lisa? Bosh. Who is the other guy? Mr. Karik Shama. Can you not turn? Okay. Harakat konim. Sometimes I think about if Sally leaves, what happens to Paris to here? Do the opposite. When he says stop, you have to move. When he said move, you have to stop. Stop. Focus. استاد حرکت استاد you can't have a permanent thing going on for yourself yeah that's scary i always wish that if we get resettled to a country i want to be around saleh and like other paris members being there also but it seems like a, something that is very impossible cuz we don't know who is going to get resettled to each country as well. I had an idea of like Saleh wanted to make like a center in here in Malaysia. Maybe he can teach the people around him. So even though if he goes to another country, somebody knows how to take care of the center in Malaysia and somehow that could be a good thing and a big thing. So that was just a small taste of what is to come from the film. Um, as you saw, those clips were from 2018 and 2022, which is the last time that we were able to shoot in Kuala Lumpur. And the film will ultimately span about seven years and we are nearing completion. Um, we're in late production and we have about two more shoots to finish up before we move into the edit. And if everything goes smoothly, we hope to complete the film and release it by the end of the year. Um, we have been running a crowdfunding campaign on Seed and Spark to raise money to help us finish the project. So I'll drop the link in the chat right now, and I'll also pass it to Jennifer to say a few words. I'm so excited to introduce Farzana and Saleh, who I met back in 2017 with my sister and the film cinematographer Jane. Saleh had just started Parsi Theater, and Farzana was a first-time actress. Since then, the theater has grown tremendously, performing shows for thousands of people in Malaysia and is the only professional refugee theater company in the country. Saleh was a prominent writer and director for radio shows in Kabul, Afghanistan before escaping to Malaysia with his family. He later founded Parasu Theater and continues to use theater to educate audiences about socio-political issues. And he was recently resettled to Virginia with his family. Also from Afghanistan, Farzana was appointed the new co-director of the theater in Malaysia, and she is a prominent activist and speaker for women and girls' rights, and continues to educate others about refugee and migrant issues. And I will hand it over to the both of them. Thank you. Sorry, uh, I should talk, yeah? Yes, we're ready for you, Saleh. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm so happy and proud uh, to be with you in this webinar. Uh, my name is Saleh Sipas, founder, writer, and director of Paris Zoo Theater. Uh, I born in Afghanistan, and I graduated uh, from the Faculty of Fine Arts of Kabul University. Uh, for eight years, I have worked with the BBC AEP Afghan Education Project to promote the human rights, women and girl education, democracy, and modern val value in Afghanistan by, by media. But uh, in 2016, I ran away from my country to Malaysia with my family due to the security issue uh, by Taliban. 
Uh, but when and well, I start, I started my new life in uh, Malaysia. I had uh, no job, no friends, and no money. At the same time, I felt bad and very sad because I had uh, lost uh, everything in my country. I felt uh, depressed. My wife also had a mental health problem at that time because it was uh, hard for us to lose everything that we had in Afghanistan. Even I uh, didn't have money to eat. I uh, couldn't even look to my children's eyes. It was uh, really difficult for our parents that cannot provide the food and the basic services for the for the children. <clears throat> uh, I didn't know the Mali language and English language on that time when I was uh, start my new life in Malaysia. Uh, it was not easy for me to find job. I asked several times the people, especially the organization and NGO, to support me, but they uh, didn't uh, respond to me. Uh, after that, I thought, oh, I should do something for myself. After that, I wrote a letter about my situation in Malaysia and sent the letter to my teacher. Her name is Kaihan Irani. She is uh, she living in uh, New York. And uh, after that, she started the online fundraising by Launchwood platform. She collect collected almost 5,000 uh, uh, USD. And she sent uh, the money to, to Malaysia for me. And she told me, it's up to you how you want to use this money. I decided to use, uh, uh, to establish uh, establish the Parasol Theater because uh, I was not alone. Thousands of refugees in Malaysia, uh, they uh, had same situation, same condition like me. By uh, establishing the Parasol Theater, I wanted to do something uh, for myself and for uh, other refugees in Malaysia. But um, when I called the refugee community to join to the Parasol Theater, I affected a new challenge uh, that the refugee community didn't believe the power of art for change. After uh, three months, uh, only six refugees from Afghan community joined to uh, Paris Theater as uh, actors who had uh, mental health problems. They even experienced uh, suicide or they, their, their family was not happy. Uh, they work uh, in, uh, in the theater. And uh, we had another challenge also, like we didn't have uh, space and place for rehearsal. And uh, the theater, the parasol theater was the second job of the refugee actors, the refugee members. And also we scared and we afraid uh, of the Malaysian police, may, make they, maybe they arrest us. <clears throat> so it was a lot of challenge. And uh, when the parasol actors, they come from the work, mostly we had uh, rehearsal after uh, 6 p.m. They were very tired. They didn't have energy. They didn't have uh, ready to do the rehearsal, but uh, I didn't stop the, the Parasto Theater. And uh, after three months rehearsal, we performed the first show called uh, The Better Taste of History uh, in 2017 in Refugee Festival in Malaysia. Uh, after that, I wrote the new show called Screaming Silence. It was about the child marriage and we performed more than 22 times for different NGO organization and uh, women uh, society uh, in Malaysia and made a community dialogue about the uh, child marriage, especially about the women and girl rights. <clears throat> Why I uh, established the Parasol Theater because uh, when I saw the refugee situation in Malaysia, it was really sad. It was really sad. And uh, refugee people, totally, they're in isolation. They don't have normal uh, situation. So I try to train them and uh, train them 
like some skill like writing, directing, acting, something about about, about the theater and, and art. And also we try to loud our voice and uh, raising awareness about the refugee story, about the refugee situation in Malaysia. Uh, and also it's a huge gap between the refugee community and the host community in Malaysia. They don't have any relationship. They don't have any cooperation. Um, that gap make a xenophobia between the communities. So by the parasol theater, I try to remove the gap and the xenophobia between the community and make a social cohesion. And the other goal of the parasol is uh, empowerment the refugee community. Mostly the refugee people, they are hopeless. They lost the self-confidence. They have trauma, they have mental health problem, they have depression. So I try to do some art therapy for refugee community uh, in Malaysia. Uh, since 2017 uh, until 2023, when I was in Malaysia, we performed uh, 52 times. Uh, for uh, refugee and non-refugee for more than uh, 14,000 uh, audience. It's uh, really difficult for refugee to perform in this level, but uh, because I really believe the power of art for change, for education, for raising awareness, for empowerment, that's why I continue, I didn't stop. And uh, the Paraso performance actually make a new opportunity for refugee in Malaysia. Now, uh, we have a very, very good relationship. We have very, very good and amazing friend in Malaysia because of Parasu activity. Uh, and also we change the picture about the refugee because this is a big picture that people have in their mind in Malaysia. That means refugee no have talent, no have knowledge and no have skills. Always they are in need. But when we perform the Paris to show and share the, the, uh, the refugee story, uh, we show we are a part of this, uh, the Malaysian community. We are human and uh, we know our responsibility. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, we change the, the, that image. That means we are not challenged. We are opportunity in the, in the host country. <clears throat> uh, also Paris to, doing some uh, work, uh, theater workshop for refugee. And also we have training class and we train the leadership, the new leadership for Parasto. And we uh, did uh, many presentation, uh, many workshops for um, Malaysian students, for, for uh, young refugee. At the same time we do, uh, still we, we are doing the, 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 the performance. Uh, right now, I'm uh, living in the uh, U.S. because last year in 2000, uh, in, in August, I I came to my new home uh, in, in U.S. So now I try to establish the Paris to theater in U.S. as well because I know uh, some people, they came from the war country in, in U.S. and they have trauma and they, they are hopeless and uh, domestic violence and the mental health and depression infected their life. <clears throat> so uh, they don't, that means they don't have normal uh, situation. So I try to establish uh, the Palace of Theater in uh, US as well. And I call if uh, you are, uh, if possible, just uh, we can work together and uh, make an opportunity for uh, uh, other people that uh, they have a, a problem that I mentioned already. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, should I go? Yeah, just, just one point about the documentary. Uh, sorry, I forget. I am really excited for this documentary because this is the other platform that uh, the Paris documentary show the refugee situation and also the refugee talent and the bad situation. So that's why this documentary is really, really important. And 
I really appreciate Jane and Jennifer and Justin. They work really hard for uh, to finish and complete this um, documentary. Now I pass to Farzana Yakta, the new director of Paris to Theatre in Malaysia. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry about if the background noise and I'm currently in the car. Uh, it's around 12 24 in Malaysia. I thought the meeting is going to be at one o'clock, so I came out to eat. Uh, but here I am. Um, I'm Farzana and I'm currently living in Malaysia as a refugee. And I am the new director of Paris to Theater. Um, I started acting back in 2017. And the reason I got involved was because of Saleh, because Saleh is my actu actually my brother-in-law. And the very first show I did as a lead was, and then, uh, sorry, a Screaming in Silence, where it was about child marriage. And um, the reason why um, I really felt connected uh, um, to this show was because um, my mother was someone who was uh, forced to get married, uh, was forced to get married uh, in a very young age. And, um, that was the very first show that I did, and I wanted to raise awareness to this, uh, not just for my mother, but for um, Afghan women, not just not just for Afghan women, the women around the world, because uh, child marriage is something that uh, we have it everywhere around the world, not just in Afghanistan, not just in Malaysia. There's everywhere, but it's very it's not being spoken a lot, and. <laughs> Since then, I've been um, in many shows and I've been working alongside with Saleh. And me just now watching the small clip of the documentary uh, saying that one day Saleh leaves, I want to be with him. Uh, I want to be somewhere where Saleh goes. It just makes me very emotional because I it, it came to me as a shock as well. I didn't know that I'm... Uh, I always thought that one day I'm going to direct a show or even write a show and direct it. And um, But I didn't know that it would happen so soon, but, uh, I, uh, but I'm okay with it. I love the fact that uh, I'm being able to do this right now. And um, the refugees in Malaysia, they need me. And um, the, one of the reasons why I get... Uh, so involved in Paris too, and I wanted to act uh, professionally. I wanted to one day be someone um, who works in movies or huge theaters to raise awareness about uh, the issues people are facing. Uh, was um, just being able to see the effects of it, the impact of it. Because uh, uh, I remember when I was the very first woman who joined uh, Paris too back in 2017 and there wasn't much women who were stepping out to do theater during that time and uh one of the latest show that uh, Sally was here and he did Red Soil of Kabul there were so many women auditioning for the show and currently right now um as a director right now um when currently we are having workshops the leadership trainings english classes um uh, digital trainings uh, and the amount of women that comes and signs up for our classes makes me really happy and um, it makes me emotional as well I uh, if I was to look back a couple of years ago um, women didn't want to be in these places uh, felt shy to be in these places where they are going to make a um, well, basically, from the community that we come in, women are, is not supposed to, um, you know, raise their voice or give out their opinion when there are men in the room, as uh, or they just need to um, stay at home, uh, be a wife, or take care of the kids, take care of the house. But nowadays, um, I, I'm experiencing seeing this. I'm literally seeing women step up, even single mothers uh, joining our leaderships, programs our um, workshops some are even interested into acting and um yeah um uh thank you all for being here um uh let me know if you have any questions uh 
because uh, I don't know. Oh, oh there's uh, one part I think, Saleh. For those of you who don't know what parasu means, parasu is a bird called swallow. Uh, it's a bird that uh, is a it, it's a bird that it's an immigrant bird, bird actually, which uh, is always traveling and doesn't have a specific home, and uh, quite similar to how refugees live. Um, they're always traveling. They don't have uh, one specific home. And this is a name that Saleh chose and given to Paris. And um, also, I'm very excited, very, very excited for you guys to see um, the documentary. And um, I think you will get to know me more t through the documentary. And uh, I hope you enjoy the documentary. And I'm so excited for it to come out. I know Justine, Jane, Jennifer, um, Everyone that has worked on this uh, documentary have really worked really hard uh, on it. And they are such an amazing team to work with. And yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just one point I want to add because, sorry, I, I, I forget. <clears throat> uh, I, I apologize because of my English is not well. Uh, what is the impact of Parastu theater activity for refugee community in Malaysia? <clears throat> so the first impact, the refugee community now they believe the power of art for change. The second thing, the youth refugee, when they join to Parastu theater, we train them. After training, they have skills, and they do some great job for themselves, for their family, and they can support easily uh, themselves. Uh, and also, we introduce many youth refugees to the business company, and now they have very good job and they are working. Uh, because the Malaysian government, they didn't sign the refugee convention, that's why there's a lot of limitation in front of the, the refugee people. Uh, they, know, they cannot send the children to school, they cannot work, uh, and they don't have access to uh, medical services. It's, it's many, many limitations. <clears throat> and the last show that we perform, it was about the government fall in Afghanistan. Uh, when we call for refugee community, please come and uh, join to this group. Uh, it was really different. As the beginning, the beginning after three months, just six refugee joined. But last year, in half day, more than fifty refugees joined because they believe the power of art. And um, one of them told me it was his dream when he was child, uh, thirty years ago. It was his dream to act on theater. But after thirty years, uh, Parasto opened the opportunity for him. Now he is an amazing actor, and last month the international conference in Malaysia invite him and he share his experience and his 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 story. This is one. Uh, Parzan is uh, the the great example of uh, uh, refugee in Malaysia. When uh, she joined, uh, she was really shy girl, and she uh, was not like uh, like now. But now. She, she is a leader of Paris and she worked with hundreds of refugee and people in Malaysia and um, other refugees as well. Uh, when we work, when we run some a TO workshop with refugee, I mean, it's, this is really, really work as a medicine for refugee because they cannot go to the um, uh, medical center, they cannot go to hospital because of uh, the limitation. <clears throat> and also we, make a very good uh, relationship between the refugee community and, and host community, and they can trust each other. This is really important. Uh, in 2022, we performed a show called And Then Come Spring. It was a professional collaboration between Parasu Theater and the uh, Malaysian Company Theater, and thousands of people watched the show. So we transfer a message, yes, we, it's no different between us, we can work together, and we can respect and we can uh, uh, learn from each other. And uh, Parasu is the only uh, theater group in Malaysia that is led by refugees and giving um, 
connecting refugees directly with people and also giving um, firsthand stories. And uh, uh, it's very original. And that's why a lot of people love, love to see what we do. And um, we have shown uh, not just refugees, but non-refugees, the power of art, what uh, art really can do, can bring people in together and can change a lot of minds we had people that uh joined our shows and they're like when we heard the word refugees we are always like they need our help they're helpless um we always need to help them donations food packages but when we come to sh watch your shows we are in a wow we're like we had no ideas or that refugee are able to do something like this and there is a question what is paris working on right now you mentioned some workshop. What is your next show? Okay, so Parasu is working on a couple of things right now. Uh, first is Parasu Language Center, we where we are teaching um, basic uh, English to uh, mostly single mothers and the youth that just enters Malaysia. So we are teaching them English just to help them to... Uh, go on with their daily life to uh, be able to apply for jobs and also besides that we are doing our leadership trainings uh, which um, we understand that um, one of the challenges we face here because we are a refugee led theater and um, we work with refugees the thing is that as refugees, we have no idea when are we going to leave the country because Malaysia is a transit for us. So we have no idea, are we going to go in 10 years time, one more year time or four years time? We have no idea. So with the leadership training, what we are doing is to teach from zero to 100 of what we are doing to a group of uh, uh, young people from uh, 16 years old to uh, 40. Uh, we are teaching them basically writing, directing, research, producing, proposal writing, basically everything that we are currently doing, we are teaching them. And uh, this is kind of in uh, our succession plan as well, where uh, in, in any case that I leave Malaysia, there are people to take, around, take over and also they can apply this either if they want to have uh, another parasu somewhere or have their own theater groups uh, in their own communities, they can start doing that. But besides that, we are currently working on two new shows. One is called Fly Without Wings, and the other is we are currently working on it. Um, Fly Without Wings is a musical, something that parasu um, has never done before. It's very new. Um, a lot of times when we have these shows, uh, a lot of people are like, Paris always makes us cry, give us something to, you know, laugh about, be happy. So this is why we are coming out with this show. This show is basically um, uh, musical and also at the same time, you want to bring in awareness about art, how art can be on your daily, can be applied on your daily life. And uh, um, you're going to perform it actually to um, refugees, refugee communities in Malaysia. And just to bring them happiness and awareness and how they can, you know, start being happy, uh, you know, start from themselves. They don't have to wait for others to make them happy. Yeah, um, that's some couple of things we are working on. And there's another thing we are currently working on is uh, our dig digital classes where we teach photography, videography, graphic design, proposal writing all of these classes for ref refugee youth so that um, they don't have to work in uh, construction or restaurants. Uh, they can come and take our classes. And then um, these are the jobs where you could, uh, you could get paid as equally as anyone else. They're not going to look at your status. For example, as a graphic designer, uh, if your designs are good, you can get hired for jobs as a photographer as well without people looking at your status. So we are trying to open up more uh, opportunities for youths, um, not just Afghan refugees here. Uh, our um, center is open to all the refugees, Myanmar, Pakistan, Afghan, Somali, Yemeni, Palestinians. So uh, these are some of the things we are currently working on. And um, on the other side, US, Saleh is actually working on opening another parasu and there and uh hopefully we can achieve that as well and yeah
Yeah, thank you for that. This is a question. Uh, yeah, I really uh, interesting to open the Harasso branch in US. I know this is uh, not easy for me because right now I do have friend just uh, Justin, Jen, and Jennifer. Uh, we we are friend, but uh, they are busy. Uh, I need to find a team like. Uh, write the proposal and uh, a producer. Uh, the other thing is not challenging because uh, the playwright is ready and also we can call for uh, uh, Afghan community in, in US. It's uh, thousands of Afghan people staying, living in, in, in US and, and other refugees from another country. <clears throat> the same method that we are doing in Malaysia, we can do in, in US as well. So the beginning is a little bit uh, challenging for me, but when we perform one or two times after that, uh, the people knows Paraso and it's more easy to continue the, the activity of Paraso in uh, US. I think, um, yes, it's, uh, I imagine it's uh, really shiny, the Paraso future in, in, in US. Just uh, the beginning is uh, hard and challenging for me. Then we can connect the US branch of Paraso with Malaysian branch and uh, maybe in, later in, in, in US because in Malaysia also we working internationally. Uh, that Farzana mentioned one of our show, uh, the actors were from uh, eight co different community and uh, Paraso friends, they work in the back scene, like a producer, the, the, the designer, they were from another country. And I love this kind of work. It's like a multicultural. And uh, we educated each other and we can loud our voice and we can enjoy. And, and the important things, this platform, this uh, method of theater is for uh, empowerment, uh, the oppressed people, they lost the hope, they lost the confidence, they lost the um uh, yeah the the life and uh, we can do a uh, great job in in us as well maybe we need some time there's another question uh mr saleh uh how can we help to spread the word in the usa uh, just uh, we have a very big community of refugees میگن که چی رقم مثلا در باره امی پرسوی که در یو اس میخواین انجام بتین چی رقمی بیشتر مردم خبر کنیم ما yes yeah thank you so much i think uh, first of all uh, i appreciate your uh, interesting you can support the documentary uh, paraso documentary uh, and the second thing yeah i share my uh, contact then um, if you know any artist, they are interesting work with migrant and refugee in US. So you can connect uh, to each other with me. Then uh, yeah, we can find the, the correct way to make a team. I think also there was one more question, um, just a question about how common it is for refugees or for Afghan theaters to exist. How common is, is theater in Afghan culture? Uh, um, yes, okay. go ahead, go ahead. I think um, it's really rare, rare. I think uh, I've not heard anyone that um, I think uh, is the I'm not I'm not gonna say the only but uh it's really really rare um they either do theater but not quite similar to what we do to bring awareness and um I think sometimes um there are not even enough Afghan actors in a sense where sometimes when a movie comes out uh, or it's an Afghan movie comes out and then there are other actors uh, from Iran or um, foreign actors working in, in an uh, Afghan movie. And I feel like we we don't have that too much. Um, and 
that's I think Saleh could answer it better, but I, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the, in my opinion, yeah. you don't have that. The, the art totally, especially the theater, infected directly by politics and war in Afghanistan, especially in these 40 years when the war happened to Afghanistan. So the art always was in the corner. No one thinking about the art. What is the art? What is, what is the power of art and the people? Mostly also didn't believe the, the, the art. Just few people, they, they are artists, they did in Afghanistan, and, um, but the, mostly the community, I mean the traditional people, the tra traditional community, they didn't, they make some jokes and they don't respect the, the Afghan artists in, in, in Afghanistan. It was really, really, uh, they use very, really bad words. For, uh, for Afghan artists in, in, in Afghanistan. I was in, in, in Afghanistan. And sometimes I didn't say I'm artist. I couldn't say I'm, uh, I work on theater. It was really, really difficult. Uh, but in, in US, I, it was a festival uh, just four years, uh, four months ago, I saw some young people they had the art background. They, I think we can find them uh, again. And it's not uh, challenging like Malaysia. It's easy in US because uh, in US we have uh, different Afghan people. Some of them have experience. It's, uh, it's not big challenge. Uh, but uh, what is the role of art in, in, in Afghanistan? Uh, Role the art didn't have any role in Afghanistan because everything uh, was always was a war and fighting and the killing. Uh, I think this is really important if we create the parasu theater in US because if we see the Afghan situation, thirty five million Afghan under the Taliban uh, regime, they lost their voice. They cannot say anything. They don't have bread. Even they don't have dry bread to eat. And they cannot loud the voice. We can uh, loud the voice for Afghan people, especially for women and girls in Afghanistan. And the Taliban banded the education uh, for them. So we can do something, I mean, for human being issue. Yeah. And um, our... And um, art is not something uh, we are working on it to make it much more common into communities, uh, um, especially our community and other refugee communities where they can use art in a form of expressing themselves. And um, but it's not happening a lot, um, which um, our only our little group can only do much. Uh, but we are trying to. Um, in Malaysia, we have been able to change that. We have been able to uh, bring awareness, and uh, there are uh, we are actually training people to, you know, um, do what we are doing, and uh, we are training them from zero to hundred, and that's what we are doing currently, actually, with them. But um, we are always limited by that status that we have. And I think um, Paris too in America would be such an amazing idea. And I think it's going to open a lot of opportunities, not for just Afghans, for any other refugees. Uh, and it's going to inspire a lot of people. And it would be really nice to just uh, sometimes, um, you know, go to the communities. Paris too is a community where you can go there and get to know people. Uh, closely and listen to their stories or watch their stories. So, yeah. I think Parastu can change that um, where art can be something where it's normal and it's being used onto daily lives. Because uh, as an Afghan girl, um, um, my family at the very beginning did not support it. Many Afghan girls here, the families does not support it. And um, because they don't know much about art. They don't believe in the power of art. 
but then even later on like um, my sister got involved uh, into art and my mom was always our biggest supporter uh, so I think that we can change that slowly there any more question okay yeah if, if others have questions feel free to um drop those in, in the chat um um yeah i i just want to say and not to end, not to end the conversation by all means please feel free to others ask any questions but yeah it's just very inspiring and i really appreciate it um what you both said about the the power of art for change and it's so apparent how that that change can be very personal for those participating in your theater could even be even struck by how in a lot of ways art can be very therapeutic or a way to um you know heal with trauma through through acting and also to tell one's story and then also just the change that had as you said how it, it's closing this gap of misinformation and fear between you, um, your community and the host community and also just that the way it is even today right it's 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 crossing it's crossing borders um, and impacting people around the world and I hope the documentary continues to do that um so it's very inspiring and I was curious too um and you, and you started getting to this as you were talking about how it, it at first it sounded like it was founded by um, members of the Afghan community, but it's it looking at Malaysia, that it's true, it's a transit country and there are people in similar situations from other parts of the world, just thinking about Myanmar, Burma, and it sounds like other people who carry the status of refugee in Malaysia are also participating. Um, so I was curious, have, are there plans or, uh, in the future for, for theater productions um, that's like multicultural or or you know stories that, like playwrights from other other parts of the world or countries that are in Malaysia that are part of your theater. Actually, um, uh, Paris, this is uh, actually um, it's a good question. A lot of people ask it. Uh, is Paris Lu only for Afghans? Uh, because Sole is an Afghan uh, who founded it, uh, but uh, Paris Lu works with all refugee communities and. Uh, our previous show we did, and then come spring, we worked with um, a Malaysian director and we had actors from Myanmar, we had actors from Syria, we had uh, actors from uh, pa Palestine, we had actors from different um, communities, refugee communities in Malaysia. And then we have another show actually, uh, specifically, um, it's about... Uh, the show is called The Roof That Collapsed. It's about three girls from three different countries. They are actually 13-year-old girls. And the story is about um, these three girls, or one of them from Afghanistan, the other is from Myanmar, and one is from Yemen. And um, at the beginning of the story, you question, um, how are they actually related? And then by the end of the story, you notice that they are very much similar. They came from a war country and the struggles they've been through and how it affected them right now and where they ended up as refugees. Um, so Paris to um, have worked with different community refugees and currently is working with different communities as well. Uh, I think um, um, yeah, we, we want to highlight... The, uh, the the last the, sorry the last show also uh, we performed last year called uh, Great Soil of Kabul. It was through the actor because the story came from Afghanistan. The all actors were from Afghanistan. Back uh, but on the back scene, it was all non Afghan. In total, the 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 number of the production team was forty five people, uh, but mostly. Uh, they were from uh, another community as well. We had from Sri Lanka, we had from uh, Bosnia, we had from Malaysia, we had from uh, Syria, and it was different con uh, from different community. Uh, so the upcoming show also, it's about the story is about two neighbors. One is the refugee neighbors, the another one is the Malaysian neighbors. 
So at the beginning of the show, they don't like each other. It's because of a lot of misunderstanding. But at the end, they are very friendly and they invite each other and they share the, the, the culture, the food, and something like that. And they love each other. Um, so that show also is uh, multicultural and uh, is international. We must bring some Malaysian actors on the back scene, all is non-Afghan. Uh, because we believe Paraso is not just for Afghan, because the other people, they, it's true, they, they are waiting for Paris to, to open the door for everyone. Hey, thank you so much. Um, and those all sound like like wonderful, wonderful productions. Um, so I think at this time we have a few more minutes. Um, so just to leave the door open, if anyone have any other questions, um, if if not, we can begin to to wrap up. Um, also very cognizant, Farzana, that you're calling in. I think with a twelve hour time difference, probably one in the morning. <laughs> so um, special thanks to you for uh, for being no up. No worries. It's okay. <laughs> Um, I'm also dropping in the chat for everyone, just a quick survey, um, just if you could take a moment to, to do that. Um, you can also do that by scanning the QR code and of course in a follow-up email to everybody, um, we'll include that as well, but that's just an opportunity to get some feedback um, and we also welcome ideas for other future topics and, and speakers. Um, and so with that, um, just want to say on behalf of Refugee Welcome Collective, special thank you to all of our presenters. We will certainly be following this um, closely, looking forward to seeing the documentary, look forward to um, future productions of the Prostor Theater in Malaysia, as well as in the United States and hopefully all around the world. Um, so with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Um, unless anyone from our presenters have any final, I want to certainly give them the final word if they'd like to, to add anything else. Just thank you so much. This has been great. And thank you so much, Saleh and Farsana, for sharing the amazing and groundbreaking work that y'all have been doing. Yeah. Thank you to the Refugee Welcome Collective. And thank you, Saleh and Farzana. That was so lovely to hear. And I can't wait for the productions. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks all it of you. Thank fun. you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Have a Good rest of the week, everybody. Take care. Take care.